I'm so excited. I feel like oh, I get the oh, first. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask, since I'm this excited, what's well, my frequency at? What, what is my frequency at? At this particular moment, it's yes, fluctuating between 185,500 cycles per second and 187,722 cycles per second. Woo! I'd be more excited, but I don't really know what that means. <laughs> so what does that mean? It's a vibrational representation of the collective energy of your entire body, your energetic field around your body, electromagnetically speaking, and a few other things that you are connecting to in terms of time-space relationships. What are those other things I'm connecting to in terms of time-space relationships? Well, the idea of other extraterrestrial connections, what you call past lives that you now know are actually current parallel realities and so on and so forth. We're reading all of that as a collective vibration that represents you at this particular moment. Extraterrestrial societies, like specific ones? Like Sirius, okay. you understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pleiades, you understand? Yeah, the ones that interact with us the most, if I'm understanding correctly. Are there ones that interact with us more than others? It depends on the time. It depends on whose job it is to do that at a particular time. So yes, there's fluctuations back and forth. Okay. Okay, so something that I've been just so bewildered about. Um, bewildered. Bewildered, right. you know, I, I'm pretty good at figuring things out, but this yes. one stumps me. And that is what? The five laws. Yes, you exist, everything is here and now, the one is the all, the all are the one, what you put out is what you get back, and everything changes except the laws. What's so confusing about that? It seems pretty plain. So. The words themselves are plain. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Do you believe them to be facts? These laws? like factual? These are the facts. Okay. So These are a description of the structure of existence so as it translates into your reality. How do you know it's a because fact? Because we can see it. We can see that it's a structure. There's nothing you can do to change it. That's why it's a fact. You cannot stop existing. Try. Go ahead. I'll wait. <laughs> well, that's one of them, right? That's one of them. Um, we but exist. everything else is an offshoot of that. The idea is that time and space are illusions, which means everything is actually here and now. Because there is only now, there is only here. Someone asks you what time it is, it's never then or when, it's always now. Therefore, it can't be anything but now. Everything exists now. And everything exists here. Because here is all there is. I so, believe that's what we understand, yes. but I also believe that there could be more than that that we don't yet understand. Of course there are more things than you understand, but that doesn't change the structure of existence. Understand the structure never changes. What changes is your experience and perspective of the structure. That's how creation grows, by having new experiences, new perspective, new points of view of the structure that never changes. Sure, sure. I, I totally understand that. But how do you know this structure to be a structure? How do you, how do you... Well, we're using that term as a convenient way of explaining it in your reality, in your language, because that's what many people on your planet understand. It's not really a structure as you understand it in the classic sense of the word, but that is a way to represent that it is something inviolate, that it is something that holds a space, so to speak, without actually having or occupying any space at all. So yes, technically, there is no structure, but it's an easy way to explain it in your language, in a way that people can use. Does that make sense? No? Yeah, no, does, not really. Does. Um, I'm just looking for something more. It's like this structure you're talking about. I feel like I have to believe it to be true. And I feel like everything yes. is a belief, and, and how can I have a belief without first having a thought? You have a belief before you have a thought. Belief in a definition is what creates emotions, thoughts, and behaviors. You can't have a thought, you can't have a feeling, and you can't have any kind of a behavioral experience whatsoever if you don't already believe something to be true. Okay, so how do I know I'm having a belief without having a thought about that belief? Thoughts can reinforce the belief, but the belief and definition had to come first. I'll give you an example. Think about it this way. If I gave you a word that you didn't know the definition to and asked you how do you feel about it or what do you think about it, you would go, I don't know, because I don't know what it means. I have no definition. Would I or would I have a feeling about it? Would I make one up? <laughs> it would be relatively vague is what we're saying. Okay, okay. Do you understand? In other words, the word brontide. Do you know what it means? Brontide. It makes me think of broth, chicken broth. I understand. It makes you think of that. <laughs> but what do you feel about the word itself because you don't know what it means? It feels heavy. All right. But that's about it. Do you understand? It doesn't go much further because you don't really have an accurate definition of what that word means. However, I feel like if I spend some more time thinking about it, I could take it. Yes, further. and that's fine. But again, you're skirting the issue. 
okay. because you're not actually addressing what the word is. And therefore, you're not having a feeling about the meaning of the word. You're having feelings around the idea of figuring out what the meaning is, so, which means you're giving it yeah, meaning. Yeah, okay, I get that, sure. You understand? Mm -hmm. And you're not feeling anything until you give it a meaning. So you're the one giving it a definition of some sort, even though it may not be the actual definition, you keep supplying it with definitions in order to have some feeling about it. Yes, and so let me try and ask this in a different way. When I supply it with definitions and meanings, I have to have thoughts to do that. No. Well, what am I having then? The idea is you can have thoughts about it, but it is there first. That's what we're saying. When you have the thoughts about it, you're having thoughts about something that is already there. Otherwise, you couldn't have a thought. It has to be there as something. It has to be there as some form of definition, some form of arrangement of something that you're relating to in order for you to have a thought about it. So that thing can exist without me having a thought? The definition is part of what forms your personality. The fact that the definition exists is what creates the thought. You may or may not have thoughts about it, but you can't have the thoughts at all if you don't have the definition first. Okay, really you are taught definitions when you're growing up. You absorb them through body language, through telepathy from your parents, your society, all around yeah. you. The thing of it is, is it happens so unconsciously that you don't even realize until later that you've been fed a library of definitions that you're then having feelings, thoughts, and behaviors about as a response to those definitions. But if you weren't fed those definitions, this means this, this means this, you wouldn't be having any thoughts about it at all. So a, a question to go further into that. Um, kids that are born and they're like three years old and they can play Mozart on the piano, but nobody's taught them to do that? Yes. How does that happen? Well, it's not true that nobody has taught them. Oh, so from another realm? Yes. Okay. Okay, so, so when I'm born, yes. I can be born with definitions? You can choose to have, and people usually do choose to have, some basic definitions if that serves the path they are choosing to experience themselves as in that particular life experience. Yes, of course. You freeze certain ideas within that matrix of your crystallization into physical reality so you can have some momentum already, some pattern established that will then lead you, at least to some degree, in the direction of the theme you chose to explore. So yes, of course, you crystallize those definitions when you're born to some degree, and, but you remain open for a while to receive other definitions that then form things like family relationships and what the world is like that you've been born into and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, as far as the five laws go, yes. when you discovered them, just like when you discover anything, yes. are you always open to there being something greater than that? that what you understand in that moment? Like these five laws of right course. now are like... Of course. Okay, good. There may or may not be a sixth so law. We don't know. What we're saying is all we have ever discovered is five. And so far in thousands upon thousands of years, there has never seemed to be a reason for a sixth to appear. I'm so excited for the future. Or the... You know what I mean when I say future. I do. <laughs> so what, is there another term I can use? Man, language is really annoying sometimes because... May I, remind you, may I remind you that the word annoying is part of your language. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. My annoyance annoys me. Totally. All right. <laughs> I'm with you on that one. Um, is there another word I can use? Well, the idea is to understand that annoyance can only come from a negative definition. No, no, no not annoyance. Um, uh, future. That was the word. Future. Well, it's another present. It's a parallel present. If you want to say it's a probability, you can, okay. but it's a parallel present that already exists. And therefore, you can take on some of the vibration of that if you wish to manifest it in a space-time framework. And that's what you call manifesting from the future. But it still exists already in some form. It's just that you're becoming aware of it and taking on or matching a frequency that allows you to have an experience of it. Yeah, when I, when I talk about things... I'm like, okay, I understand I'm having a linear experience right now, and I'm choosing to believe that I chose to have a linear experience. Yes, so, of course. So, past, present, future. Um, while I'm expanding my consciousness and yes. opening my mind to new concepts, once I haven't yet understood... Um, yes. How can I word this? See, the words. <laughs> they can be tricky sometimes. Um, what would be... 
I guess I'm just gonna have to figure this out on my own. I mean, I know you have to follow my joys and my excitements. I'm, I'm having a challenging time figuring out how to ask you how to word things in a way that will um, facilitate my evolution with language All right. and consciousness. Well, the idea really in the most fundamental way is that if you start understanding the five laws, mm. especially the idea that everything exists now, mm you will develop a different form of language to express that understanding, but you have to have the understanding first. The language will come with it. Okay. Does that help? Yeah, I'll totally try that on. <laughs> Do you have what you need or is there something else? Yes, there was one more thing that's very important to me. Oh, all right. Just took a second to remember there. So I understand we have a template for this physical dream reality. Is yeah. there a template for the sleeping dream reality? Yes. What's that template in a nutshell? No, it's not in a nutshell. <laughs> Well, Unless literally, you want to imagine that it is, then it is. You know what I mean, Bashar. I do, but you I'm playing I mean. with your language. <laughs> there is always a higher realm that is a template for the lower. It never ends. Does this help? Nope. As above, so below. As above, so below. As above, so below. There is always an imagination that manifests in a different realm that comes from a higher one. Because it all comes from source. But source isn't the end. It's Jeez. not the beginning or the end. It just is. Because it's infinite, right? It is, and time is subject to it, but it isn't subject to time. Okay, so is the, like this template reality for the waking dream, the physical reality, there's things we have to abide by that we've agreed to. Yes, it's like playing by the rules of a chess game. You may have different pieces, you may have different strategies, you may have an unusual looking board, but as long as you agree to play chess, you have to abide by the rules of chess or you're not playing the same game. Right, so is there a chess game for the dream reality? The same, like a, a, a template? Yes, as I said, it comes from a higher realm yet again. It all comes, in your language, down from the source. Even though that's just a euphemism, since everything exists at once. Right, I'm not asking where it comes from, I'm asking what that template is. What it is? Yes. It is the imagination of the higher intelligence in that realm. And are there less rules? Like, we have certain rules here. We're physical. You know, if I cut my head off, I die. Like, we're in my there, dream, I don't. From your perspective would appear to be less rules. Okay. But really, there are just different ones. Different. Okay. And again, the rules are nothing more than an agreement as to what that level actually means to the beings who choose to experience it. Rules are just a way of defining borders to play a game. Just like I said, there are rules to play chess, but it's not like they are rules that you can't break. It's just that you have to understand if you break them, you're not playing chess anymore. That's all. You might be playing checkers. You might be playing ping pong. But the idea is rules are simply an agreed upon parameter or framework in which to have a particular experience and going beyond them means you're having a different experience. Yeah, I totally understand that. What I'm wondering is what those rules are for the dream reality. Because I know what the rules are for the for this waking physical dream. I what see. Well, one of the rules for the dream reality is that what you dream will seem real. Yeah, that's true. No doubt about that. There you yeah. go.